it's Greg here again with the final unboxing of the day. I've got one more to do but I'm going to do it tomorrow. I've a little bit of work so far but uh, this has been most of my time spent today is uh, doing these uploads. So as you can see it's, it's, it's not a new kit, it's the uh, first turreted tank in the world, the French FT-17. A riveted uh, version. You say it's a main kit. Quite a nice little tank. Very simple build I would have thought. And it's part of the Tyrannosaurus Rex uh, part. Uh, yeah, the Tyrannosaurus Rex parts. Or boxes or whatever, or, or line of kits. A nice artwork on the front. So it's a First World War tank. And there's a bit of a scene going on there with the sandbags and the uh, trenches. Some soldiers there, and it's it's a nice kit, which I didn't really know until I until I bought it all. Actually, it was uh, Dave, one of my good friends, Dave from uh, Stoke. He built it and put it on on and showed me a picture of it. And you actually get a diorama base with it as well. Obviously, it's World War One. There's a diorama base included in the kit, so you know it's not too bad. It's a bit of PE in there. In there. It's fairly straightforward, and the kit number is on the end there which is TS-011 and it's the French FT-17 light tank riveted turret so on the side, the box is going to be damaged, that's me, nothing else uh, a bit of information there so let me just see if I can get it all in there, I'll right, still be able to read it a bit of kit information as well on the other side we have the AK colours, I use AK now and again but I mainly to me around um, life colour. And there we are the caster which is a different kit. It's got an interior build and the diorama base which is included in this kit. And there's a few of them, uh, I, you know, the whatever they are. The scan. So let's have a look, look in the box. It's a fairly small box but uh, it's quite heavy. I had a quick look, you know, nothing too much. But first of all, we'll, uh, we'll have a quick look through the diorama, through it, through the, um, the booklet. Nice, it's a really nice cover. This is a nice. It's like a semi-gloss paper. It's quite nice, that, isn't it? There's the box art again on the front. It's to tell you, light tank riveted version, World War One diorama base, 135 scale, and it's a Tyrannosaurus Rex. The first page is the usual, which is in Japanese, and then we got a bit on the start on the on the uh, with the English carrying over to there. So there's a bit of history to read on it as well. If you're interested in that sort of thing, it's quite a few pages of different languages. Let me just get to the. Uh, there's a bit of history again of the creator of the uh, of the tank. A little bit of history there again. And then we're starting off with the tools that you're going to need, and there's two versions, A or B. Is that what it says? Yeah, two options for this model shown in the drawings. Please select one of the options before you assembly and refer to the paint scheme for details. So there's two. I'll probably do the first one with the, with the uh, heart on the back when I get round to it. So, think of one lovely, lovely, I do like Meng's um, instructions. Simple to follow and easy. It gives you the painting guides as well for the inter for you know bits of it's going to be the interior. This is the driver's uh, driver's hatch, sorry driver's seat and uh, pedals and whatever it needs being there. There's a firewall and then there's sets up and there's the interior that goes on top of this and this looks like the seat and a couple more handles, one thing and another. And I tell you there again, the part of the left interior assembly is giving you colours that you match up, there's uh, two colours there, oh, there's a light and a dark colour, so presumably that will happen on, the, uh, on both of them, and then we have a bit of the exterior again, and that's on the uh, right, is it the right side, left side, left exterior, and then we start off with the right interior and the right exterior again, so fairly straightforward so far, nothing too overtaxing. And then we get on to page six, sorry, step six, which is starting to cut sort of the upper hull. A couple of, uh, yeah, the upper hull, the turret, part of the turret. Attaching the roof armour, sorry. And then we're starting the turret hull assembly. Again, so we've got the hull assembly there. On there, which obviously which we've done a bit prior, which these has got the interior bits and the exterior bits. 
and then we start on the uh, the bogies for the wheels. There's quite a few wheels, even though it's only a small tank. There's quite a few, and then left running gear assembly, which is probably the most complex bit so far. On the bottom there, but uh, shouldn't be too bad. I think this is going to work in suspension if I'm what if I'm not mistaken, because I think there's a little spring in it. And then there's the uh, I don't know if it's a, no, it's not the sprocket, it's the return, the return wheel as well. And, that. and then we have, you know, carrying on, this is the right side of it. And it comes in three parts then, obviously you've got the right side, left side and the main hull. So they all go together. That side, that side, and then we've got this like, uh, I think it's some kind of protection for the fuel drum at the back, I presume. Oh no, it's an unditching tail, my apologies. That's what that is. And then we start the tracks, and I've heard conflicting rumours that the tracks don't click together and they need gluing, but we'll find out. But they look quite simple to click together, it says no glue. So just be careful when you're taking them off the sprue, because I know they're on the sprue, I had a quick look. And then we start putting some of the outer hatches on. Driver's hatch, and then attaching the driver uh, engine deck. But I think on the other kit, it's got the, the full interior and the engine on the. Uh, I think it's slightly more expensive than this. And then we're starting off with the machine gun and the uh, weapon assembly in, in, a, in, a in the gun breech for the inside of the turret. That's quite nice. Fairly straightforward. Gives you the colours for the straps. It goes on the inside, presumably that was when you, because it wasn't, uh, I don't think it was a motorised turret. No, it wasn't, it was one that you sort of pushed round. So I presume that belt is something to do with that. And then we patch the low hole to the turret. And then we have a machine gun, Hodgkin's M1914 machine gun assembly. So that's on a tripod. We have a set of uh, ammunition for it and ammunition box by the looks of it. And then we have, an, we have the... Uh, Diorama assembly, which you know, fairly straightforward by looking at it, which is basically a, a bit of a, a diorama that's similar to what's on the box work on the yard. You've got the broken wood, sandbags, and like a trench, and it's sitting on the top. And then we have the sprue map telling you what we have, which is obviously the plastic, the, di uh, the decals, and the bit of photo etch. And then we've got the colour variants, which is quite nice. Again, we've got the right side, left side, and view from the top, which is good. And the same with the rear and the front. And then we have the other version, which is side, two sides, front and back, and overview. And there we are with the colours. It's only give you, uh, yeah, it's only give you the AK colours, but uh, I'm sure we'll. Uh, find ones to match. So that's the instruction sheet. Very nice indeed the instruction sheet. That's uh, a nice nice start to the kit. So the first large screw we have I'll well, we use this one first. Well, let's open this first. This is all to do with the, um, the diorama. So I may as well build it so we can make out of it. We have some sandbags. Obviously parts go into there. This is this, the outside of the frame. We have the wood which I have to say is, is, is quite nicely detailed. Really is quite nicely detailed that. Have a nice, uh, get a nice wood effect on that. More wood. This is not all that is in the set. This, this is the outside. This is the uh, bit for the base. So that's quite nice. Fairly straightforward I would have thought. This is a build I think me and Joe from Joe's model kits are going to do together eventually. He's made a start on his uh, whippet. I have yet to start mine, but uh, I probably will at some point. I'll catch up with life and one thing and another. And then we have part, another part of the base, which is where the tank would sit. And obviously we have like sand, gravel, muck on that side. And there again, obviously where the wood goes into and things. I'm sure we can make something out of it. A few individual sandbags, which is not badly detailed at all. I presume these are part of the uh, diorama as well. So that's a bit of a bonus. I've never seen a kit with a built-in uh, diorama. So that'd be quite nice because obviously it'd be, if I get a nice block of wood to put underneath it and varnish the block of wood. Uh, that would look quite nice, wouldn't it? I hope it would. Pop that back in there for now. 
and then we start with the, with the screws for the actual tank itself. It's not a massive tank, as you can know, it's only a small light tank, but uh, one of the first turreted ones in the world, if not the first. Some nice detail, some fine, some fine parts on there. That's part of the inter that's the interior. So this is quite slim, almost like torpedo shaped. But the detail in there, obviously, this will be used more as well for the uh, the other kit with all the interior parts. But nicely molded again. Can't complain with a lot of small parts there. Some really fine small parts. I have to be careful taking them off the sprue. Uh, no unsightly. Uh, Injection marks apart from where you're not going to see them on the rear of things, but I think it's like the seat I would think for the driver. So there's no there's no figures I don't think in it. We have the ammunition belt there, which is nice, quite nicely detailed for quite how small it is. Part of the firewall, I presume, or it could be the rear and on sure. But there again, you've got like a nice canvasy texture to the I presume that's the driver's seat, that part there, I'm not sure, but it could be. And same with the uh, the rear there, it's like a, it's got that same sort of texture where we are. Where are we at? Where's my finger? Not with that, bloody hell. So it's got that sort of texture on again. On that little piece there. So yeah, so far so good. So far so good. And the next screw we have. Looks like part of the suspension, I think. Bits and pieces. We have the machine gun, which isn't slide molded, but it's quite nicely detailed. A bit of suspension, I think, there's a, a final drive there. It looks like the outer uh, trestles for the wheels to go into. There again, some nice fine detail work again in there. A lot of small parts. But nicely moulded parts. That's on the, these are the inside, and there's a little bit of work on the outside. If you can pick up what it says on that's the external, it tells you something. Obviously, like a little brass plaque or something, or a plaque where it obviously was made. I can't quite make that out. Let me just see if I can make a bit of light onto it. Make any difference? No, I can't read that. Let's have a look at read it with my glasses. No, it's too small for me to do, but nice touch. Nice touch indeed. Right, we have a long, quite a long sprue, but narrow. I presume this is probably to do with all the wheels. I know because I've had a look at the instructions, there's quite a lot of varying size wheels for such a small tank. As you can see, they're all on one sprue, but Different lengths, oh, sorry, different sizes. Always for different jobs. There's uh, have two sprues like that. As you can see, how small some of the wheels are compared to my side of my fingers. Those are quite small. I think uh, a lot of World War tanks were like that. World War One tanks were like that. So there's two sprues the same there. So there's no point in showing you the other sprue. There again, nice, nicely molded, nice detail. Even though it's all going to be hidden by the side skirts. Right, so we have the external of the tank. Nice, all the nice bolted and riveted details. Really quite nicely done on both sides. And that's the size of the turret. So it's only a small turret. A bit more detail again, a few hatches, this, that, and the other. And on there, a bit more of the interior. Again, with a checkerboard effect on the bottom. That's quite nice. The engine hat, I presume that's part of the, uh, could be the upper turret, part of the turret actually. Looks like it could be. Really nicely detailed. Really nice. Men do nice kits, I must admit. Their detail is, is, is spot on and the, the fit is usually bang on as well. This is another small sprue again with what looks like still a part of the turret with a few hatches. Again, but all nicely detailed again. 
and nothing wrong with those. I think my fingernails bloody cut, look at the state of them. <laughs> Small parts there as well, it's an unusual sort of sprue, big sprue gate there with two parts put on. There again, all nicely detailed again. I haven't got a clue what some of the parts are, but we'll, as we go along building it, we shall find out and educate ourselves about it. So we're just guessing. And then the last sprue is, there's two of them actually, and again it looks like a lot of the running gear again, the sprockets and the return wheel and things like that. So let's have a look. No point in getting the warp out, let's just get uh, the one out. So we have the, the big wheel at the front which is nicely detailed again, it's a solid wheel, a nice detail again, it's in two parts. Must be the inner side. And that was the outer again, and then we have the spro the uh, the sprocket. It's quite small compared to the re the uh, front rear return wheel. I'm not sure what these parts have is the little uh, tow tow hooks. They go onto the uh, to the shackles, I should say. It's a small bit with handles, like handles on the hatch type thing. I'm not sure what these parts are. It must be for the wheels, I would have thought, because there's on this side, yeah, there's that bit. Must, wheels must go onto there, and then we have the cap on top of that. But yeah, fairly straightforward. Two the same. So, it's a nice looking little kit. And so we haven't quite finished yet. We have the tracks. Now, I thought they were, I don't know why I thought they were. Um, Let's just take a little bit behind me, and then we can pop them back in. Let's just pop a couple out and see. Here we've got. So quite nicely detailed. They've got these little. I don't know if these are supposed to be on them. I'm sure I'll have to check. See a little mark on the on the top there. Probably, probably won't be. But yeah, the exterior. There again, that wouldn't take too long to get them off. I don't know how these will go together. They're just clip in or something. Oh, there you go, it's clipped in. As simple as that. Yeah, I think they'll need to come off them little marks. But yeah, if that's how easy they are to clip in, the in series is nice. See the. There's light round, perhaps. See better. That's the interior. It's quite nicely done. So yeah, I'm just gonna have to check with the uh, little. I don't know if they're injection mold uh, injection marks. Probably they are, but they're not gonna take a lot to get them out. A couple of wisps of the uh, of the file or the uh, sanding stick. But yeah, if that's as easy as they go together, I'll be well happy. That won't take long to do at all. Yeah, I've had conflicting rooms, but you know everybody has their own opinion of things and of how things go and how things don't go. So we have a bit of metal in here as well for the spring, like I did say, there was suspension. So we have a couple of metal pins. Let me just there we are, and the springs. That's all for the uh, suspension. So we've got a workable suspension, which is a nice touch. Bit of metal in there, and then we have the photo etch, which is not a massive spring uh, fret of photo etch, but more than what we would need I would have thought so there's a big strap that goes on the turret, there's a couple of plates there I'm not sure what the other pieces are but uh, we'll find out when we build it and then we have the set of decals which there again there isn't a lot of decals so I hope I can get them out of the box just a few of the love heart and a couple of numbers and that's about it really but they look decent enough, men, I've had no problem with men decals at all so that's another little kit which would be a nice build eventually when uh, I do get round to doing it which like anything else it just takes time so I think that's it for today I don't think I'll do any more I've got one more to do which I'll do tomorrow so I'm gonna go get on with some work now with why the house is quiet there's nobody in they've all gone down to the uh, to the village to the light switch on so peace and quiet for a couple of hours so I'd like to say thank you very much to all my subscribers and thank you very much for taking the time of the day to view this. Um, I will have some more updates of the T34 Stalingrad diorama. It's going along slowly, getting there, getting there, doing bits and pieces. I haven't done a lot this week, life getting in the way in general. 
Um, but it's 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 getting there. I say I'll probably have an update through the week again with how things are going. Right, so this is Greg signing off, and we'll catch you very very soon with the uh, an update out on the unboxing, whichever comes first.